Then go. Then yes, yeah, go, 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 go. Our relationship is over and I'm leaving here. Nicole and Mahmoud are really going for a 90 day fiance record as they speed towards divorce in less time than it takes Mahmoud to get over his jet lag. And things are getting heated. Leave me, I'm not going back. Leave me that. Like this time, I'm not going back ever yet. So let's talk all the drama of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, Season 8, Episode 7. I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call. Okay, let's talk Nicole and Mahmoud because we last left off with him like fleeing across a busy highway after a deeply awkward screaming match in front of Nicole's friends turned into him trying to pack his bags and go back to Egypt. I'm furious because for the last four years, I've done nothing but try as hard as I can to make this work. I've traveled to Egypt. I don't even know how many times I'd have to count the stamps on my passport. So when Mahmoud started to pack his bags to go, I feel like, when does he have to try? Also, Nicole's friend Justin wins most annoying person this episode a highly competitive award each week because he won't leave Mahmoud alone when he's just trying to take like a walk to cool off. Just sit down. Sit down. Just, I'll leave you alone. Just sit down. I just won't just sit walk. down. Okay. I'm I won't. I'll leave you alone. I won't even talk to you. Just sit okay. down. Now, despite screaming at Mahmoud to get out, when he does get out, Nicole worries about her husband wandering around LA with no money less than 72 hours after arriving in the US. But luckily, a 90-day producer steps in to help Mahmoud go to a hotel. This is all a disaster, right? So why does Nicole still want to work things out? We're married, and so both of us should have that desire to kind of fix things and I care about him. Mahmoud's over it though. He eventually returns to the apartment to grab his bags and go, and he tells Nicole that he does officially want a divorce. You're the one who told me you wanted to get a divorce like 20 yeah, times yeah, today. Yes, yes, and I still want that. And I know he said that a lot, but he seemed pretty serious this time. I have no plan, I have no fun, and I don't have any idea where I go now. And somehow I went back to Egypt. I never felt so alone in my life. Big Ed and Liz also seem like they're done after Ed called off their wedding without telling Liz. In my age, you realize that life is short and I just can't marry Liz. Now, Ed invites Liz to a bar to talk Taco Pasta Gate, but he just shows up there before she even responds to his text. So she calls him after a nap and is like, um, no, I'm not meeting you at a bar. Also, I've got a kid. All of a sudden, you just tackle Liz, me Liz, Liz. Saturday night, you blew up in front of my sister and my family. Right now, we're trying to just, this conversation no, no, needs no. to happen, but right now, we're trying to figure out where we're going to meet to talk. I mean, these two can't even make it to arguing about their relationship before arguing about a location. Regardless, my mind is made up, okay? I don't know what to expect out of you. Oh, she hung up. Ashley and Manuel are going through it too this episode. Yes, they get a win when Ashley agrees not to use the word witch to describe herself while meeting Manuel's super Catholic uncle for the first time. I'm not in like the business of disrespecting my elders. So smile and nod. And he seems pretty confused about what she's talking about in general, so it goes over fine. What doesn't go over fine is Ashley and Manuel's conversation about trust. I'm going to scream. So okay. I'm not even gonna translate what he said. This is the bull that gets me activated, okay? I'm like, where did this even come from? But it's enough to have Manuel storming off. Now, speaking of storming off, we've got to pick up with Emily and Kobe after she stormed off amid a pretty judgy conversation with his friends, who are convinced that Kobe can't be happy in his marriage with two kids because she's bossy and American. Now, Kobe's the MVP of the season, I think. He tells his friends they need to stand down, basically. And this is my wife. We got two kids already. You know what I mean? Like, we are here to catch fun. And he tells Emily that he's not actually listening to his friends. He loves her. It's true, I'm an African man and I have friends who protect my interests. I just want you to understand that. But to an extent, don't really consider what they're saying. I just, we are here for fun, right? Kobe does feel a little caught between two worlds though, because Emily wishes she could just uninvite his friends from their upcoming Cameroonian wedding. I really do think his friends are trying to sabotage our relationship. But you know, they're very important to my husband and I ultimately want them 
at our wedding. And honestly, I was shocked. Kobe agrees that after they return to the table and his friends immediately go in on Emily for not liking to be interrupted because she's a woman or something. Guys, I'm sorry to say this. If you feel like my relationship, our relationship is not worthy, then I don't think you should show up on our wedding. Now, in terms of our other couples this week, we have Patrick and Thais, who are back in Brazil and already being conscripted into manual labor by Patrick's dad. Thais thinks Patrick's dad takes advantage of him, but he doesn't feel that way. I have no problem helping out my dad or like anyone in my family. I, I like it. And because I can help, I do. And I'm sure we're setting up for more of that later this season. Lauren and Alexi go in for the consult on her mommy makeover, and Lauren starts to really understand the gravity about what's about to happen to her. You can pop a blood vessel, and if you lift something super heavy or you lift your baby off the ground, you can pop a suture, and so we have to go back into surgery and repair the... So no lifting for sure. Jasmine and Gino go down to Miami to help Jasmine feel a little bit better after learning her mom has cancer. Right after she learned, it will probably be a couple years before she sees her kids again. Also, we learned something about their dog Coco that I don't think the viewers or Gino knew before. He loves to meet people. Especially men. He, he has an attraction. I talk to the vet. What? He has a, like, that's okay. It's a sexual orientation. Well, and You never told me this. And I love Coco no matter what. I mean, I'm okay with it. I didn't know. Good for you, dog Coco. You go, dog Coco. And that's 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After for you this week. Let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments. It was kind of a wild one. Then head over to popculture.com for the latest in entertainment news. Until next time, I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call.